Job, uh, when he was talking about Job, I was thinking, you know, he could have said to the devil, it's not over yet. That's right. Amen. And that's how it's got to be. When we're down and out, we've got to say, it's that not matters. over yet. Amen. She's going to sing for Grandma, we think. Come down. Right. I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. We eat man. Man. He. He climbed up in that sycamore tree. She. She. When as the Savior. Ray. She. I'm not giving up and I'm not turning round by the grace of God I'll wear a shining crown someday and I'll keep holding on to that nail scarred hand and I'm not giving up no I'll keep holding on and I'm not giving up and I'm not turning round By the grace of God I'll wear a shining crown Someday and I'll keep holding on To that nail-scarred hand And I'm not giving up No, I'll keep holding on I've been walking through the valley through this veil of tears at times i've even questioned if my lord was near many times that old tempter says why not turn around you can't get any farther and you're just losing ground but i'm not giving up and i'm not turning around by the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday, and I'll keep holding on to that nail-scarred hand, because I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. Would you mind to tell me there's something bothering me? Why is it that old Satan just won't let God's children be? He's purposed and determined and to get right in the way and turn us from the way of life and lead those souls astray. But I'm not giving up and I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown 
someday and I'll keep holding on to that nail scarred hand cause I'm not giving up no I'll keep holding on and oh, I'm, I'm not, not giving up oh, no. and I'm not turning oh, round no. by the grace of God I'll oh, wear no. a shining crown someday oh, and I'll oh, keep no. holding on oh, yeah. to that nail scarred hand Cause I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. I've been walking through the valley, through the veil of tears. At times I've even questioned if my Lord was near. Many times that old tempter, he says, why not turn around? You can't get any farther, child, cause you're just losing ground. But I'm not giving up, and I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday, and I'll keep holding on to that nail scarred hand. Cause I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. And I'm not giving up, no, I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. And I'll keep holding on Uh to his nail-scarred hand. Cause I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. And I've been walking through this valley and through the veil of tears. At times I've even questioned oh my Lord. if my Lord was near. See that old tempter, he says, why not turn around? You can't get any farther. And you're just losing ground, but I'm not giving up. And I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. And I'll keep holding on to that nail-scarred hand. And I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. And I'm not giving up, no, I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. And I'll keep holding on to his nail-scarred hand. And I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. Let's worship Him because we may go through troubles and trials, but through the end we can come through. Amen. We don't have to give up. No, we don't. We don't got to turn around. That's right, brother. Amen. But by the grace of God, we, if we stay true to Him, if we stay in His book, if we stay on our knees, we will have a shining crown after a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Kelly, testify. I forgot that part. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, especially since I told him my dad passed away. I'm thankful that he's been my friend. Amen. Oh, yeah. And I found I have to like, give it up. Because at first, you know, when you, when you're raised by your parents, they teach you, they teach you things, they teach you principles, they raise you. You know, you want to you want to do things that make them happy, uh-huh. you know, so my dad and mom, they taught me to live for the Lord, you know, so in a way that's why I got saved, that's, you know, I, I wanted to make my parents happy, but I also wanted to live for the Lord, you know, at the same time, you understand what I'm saying, right, yeah. so when my dad passed away, I was like, okay everything I've ever lived for just felt like, why do I need to do this anymore, yeah. but Oh, you know, my heart, I knew that I had to do it because I had to make heaven. Right. Work. You know, I couldn't, you know, I had to serve the Lord. That's, you know. And so, you know, the devil was telling me, you know, your dad's not here anymore. Your mom's 
having a hard time. Don't you worry about that. You just do what makes you happy and what helps you get through this. Yeah. And so I could have buried myself in other things. I could have turned around. Yes, you but the Lord just help me. But and I appreciate that. And I'm so thankful that he's our friend and he's there yes. when we need him. Right. Yes. And I just want to make it to him. Amen. Hallelujah. That proof right there is a testimony. No matter what we go through, we can still hold on. Right. It's, since October, it's been a lot a wrong, I can't talk, a long, hard road. But yes. we got to hang on. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17 tonight. And when you're there, say amen. Glory to God. Amen. I've heard lots of preachers preach from this, and every preacher I've heard has said 10 different things and 10 different thoughts in 10 different ways. So you might get another different version out of it tonight by me. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, behold, who I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my and, a court, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide there thyself by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, <coughs> that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh and flesh in the evening. And the brook, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while. You know, I was reading about that last night, and I just got a little bit happy. Mm-hmm. And after a while, it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto them, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zedan. Isn't that right? Zion, Zedan, okay. And dwelt there, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering up sticks. And he came to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, and we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me there a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and thy after make for thee for my son, thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of the meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he in her house did eat, say that all with me, read, many days. How many now in this Bible that I got here, they have a reference off to the side and it says, or a full year. And the barrel of meal wastes not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by a lot. Today, tonight, I want to talk to you about never give up. Everything that Brother Rose has said, and uh, a few other ones have said is kind of go with this tonight. And I felt this some time ago, and that's what I want to talk to you tonight. 
Brother Rose, pray. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for your word tonight. Lord, you have blessed me. You've anointed your word. But, Lord, tonight, God, uh, anoint thy servant, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth. And tonight, God, open our ears and our hearts that we may hear what thus saith the Lord unto our hearts. And, Lord, not only to be hearers of it, Lord, but to be doers as well. And, Lord, we ask you to move in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You know, uh, I was looking at this, um, this story here. And could you imagine if someone came to you at the end of the month? And what happens at the end of the month? <laughs> if you're a senior citizen, uh, it's you're probably running low. You're, there you go. You're running low. That's a better word for it. So just imagine this: someone comes to you and says, "I know you only have enough meal to make one more cake, but I want." It. How would you? How would you answer that question? Huh? Something, to think about. Something to think about. That's right. We don't know what's going to come our way. You know, death comes and life comes. Right. You know, we have to take what comes in life and go on. Sometimes we get kicked down and knocked down all the time. But if we stay where we're at, we'll stay where we're at. We won't get back up. We'll stay in. Z. I mean, we'll stay in B and we'll never get to Z. <laughs> we get stuck. And as one preacher I heard said, get stuck at prayer 39. We don't go to prayer 40 where we can do more. <clears throat> you know, um, nothing is too big for our God. That's right. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You know, they could have feasted on this blessing for many days, for a year or two. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say it ran off. It ran out the next month. But we have faith and believe that God, when He blesses something, it's good. It's sustained. It's sustained. That's right. You know, some somebody you never know will lay your eyes on will bring you a loaf of bread out of nowhere. Like, who are you? Where'd you come from? And they, they, there's people. There's Christians that do that. Amen. Because God speaks to people's heart today. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says all things are possible with God. Come on. Just when you're at your lowest, Jesus shows right up on time. You can be at the bottom and nothing going right, and that's when the Lord shows up for you. That's when He works the best, when you need Him. Amen. If you got a, a refrigerator full of groceries, you don't care if they can get a loaf of bread by 10 bucks to somebody down the road. That's right. Uh, okay, I know. You know you can get Come on, brother. That's all right. Uh, Henry Fonda, uh, not Henry Fonda, Henry Ford. Uh, you look like you know who that is. <laughs> he, invented, he invented the automobile. Right. You know he went broke five times before he had succeeded in business. Went broke five times. But after that fifth time, he succeeded. So we got to keep going on. That's right. Amen. Amen. Um, if he would have gave up in the middle of all that, he would have never given us the automobile. He invented it. It was his. Right. Amen. Theodore Roosevelt suffered the deaths of his mother and his wife on the same day in 1884 before he became a war hero and a very effective president. Now think about it. Think about it. Oh, yeah. If he would have gave up, he'd never been a president. Right. He never would have been a war hero. But just imagine your mother and your wife dying on the same day. Right there is enough to throw it all away. I don't want to go on and quit. Amen. But we got to stay on and not quit. Uh, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, was often asked not to return to churches after preaching them in once. I've been there. Uh, and when he preached out on streets, townspeople kicked him out. And when he preached in the meadow, people turned the bull loose on him. They didn't like his preaching, Brother Rose. <laughs> he refused to give up. He preached and he preached and 10,000 people came to hear him preach. Now if he would have gave up, all them souls would have been lost and went to hell. Because they didn't hear the word of God. The word of God is true and amen. That's right. Ivory soap. It was never intended to exist. It only became ivory soap because of a 
manufacturing error. How about that? I know none of this is spiritual, but I'm getting it. Come on, brother. Ivory soap. Where'd you dig that up at? I know. But they, if you just realize some of these things, if we can do this with the, now, if these people can do this with worldly things, we can do it as Christians. Right. We can keep going on. That's right. We can do more. Uh, Kleenex tissues was originally intended to be worked as a cold cream remover. That was the first thing it was supposed to be. But someone didn't like that idea no more, and they decided to package this and market it as a form of disposable handkerchief. And I guess you know the rest of the story. Church people full of them. That's right. Church people <laughs> full of them. Amen. Brother L.D. Moore years ago had a dream that his son Terry, that he had uh, had a son, had a son Terry, that an eagle was came down flying from the sky after him. And Terry, uh, in the dream, had he saw the uh, eagle and it had very sharp claws ready to attack him. But in the dream, Brother L.D. Moore yelled in the dream, Fight back, Terry, fight back. And that's what we got to do sometimes when things come our way. We got to fight back. Amen? When people uh, do us wrong. How many has that happened to you before? Never? No one ever? Everybody's lovely to you. That's great. But when they do you wrong, some people just don't want to go to church anymore. Come on now. They yelled at me at church. I'm not going back. Forget it. Hey, if that happened to me, that's happened to me. And I've got to keep going on. you got to keep it for yourself. Right. You just can't just uh, base your salvation on anybody. We must pick ourselves up and keep going on if they do us wrong, if they spit on us like they did Jesus, if they whatever they do, we gotta go on. Can we say somebody say amen? amen. We gotta be determined. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt was a very sickly child, always down with some kind of fever. He couldn't hardly do anything like the other boys or run or race. But the doctor said a healing for this puny sick child. Very slim, or if there is a healing for him. But, you know, Theodore Roosevelt decided, I'm determined not to give up. I'm determined to get up and still run. I'm determined to get up. Somebody say amen. So this sick uh, kid, you know what happened? He got healed. Amen. He got healed. And when he got healed, he later became the president and done great things. He overcame his obstacles. Right. How many tonight has an obstacle that they've got to overcome? Come on. And that's the devil. Come on now. The devil comes by and tells us we can't sing. We can't pray. I can't pray and sing as good as Sister Kelly. Or Brother Rose. Or Sister Rose. Or Brother Peter. They're better than me. Why even go? Well, you know what we got to do? Get up. That's right. We got to get up. Amen. Uh, Fanny Crosby, who was blind all her life, she lived until she was 91 years old, a songwriter. She wrote that song, Blessed Assurance, and refused to let her blindness stop her and just give up. When people would go by and visit her and encourage her, they would always live, uh, believe it encouraged. Amen. She kept a good outlook on life. And uh, there are some people, no matter what comes their way, they're unstoppable. Because you get up and you go. Could you imagine being blind and you encourage Sister Rose one day? All right now. How would you feel? Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we have not, we have to refuse to quit. That's right. I know life is a very hard thing to live. Everyday life. I ain't just talking about in special occasions, but every day we got to pray. Right. Yeah. Every day we got to read the Bible. Right. Every day right. we got to talk to Jesus for what's going on in our life and ask Him first what we should do. Somebody Come say on. Amen. Come on now. <clears throat> now this story that I want to tell you is a little lengthy, so you just stay with me. But I'm going somewhere. Abraham Lincoln has the worst story in the beginning that I've ever heard of. You know his story? Don't, don't go to school right now. It's okay. uh, the 16th president had a lot of trouble in life. The, 
his story really does amaze a lot of people. Because um, at 22 years old, he failed a bis in business. One year later, he ran for a lecture. Lecture, I can't say Lager, yeah, what you said. And lost. And then when he was 24 years old, he experienced um, a second. He experienced a second business failure. Then when he was 26 years old, uh, the woman he loved passed away and suffered a nervous breakdown. And when he was 20, 29 years old, he lost another politician race. And then when he was 34 years old, he lost another race, Congress race. When he was 37, he got elected Congress, only to be defeated two years later. And then when he was 46, he lost the bid on Senate. And then one year later, he failed his attempt to become vice president at the age of 49. He was defeated again. He had four sons, but didn't live very long. But at 51, at 51 years old, Abraham Lincoln was elected president United States of America. And he successfully led this country through one of the most difficult periods in the American culture. Many people would say that Lincoln, Lincoln would never be anybody. He would never make it as president. But hey, he didn't get up. He didn't give up. He didn't give in. And he said, I'm going to do this. He said, I'm going to make it. There are problems all around me, that I'm, but I'm going on. Could you imagine at 51, president? I mean, he was young in life, he couldn't do nothing. But at 51, no matter how old you are, you can still win. That's right. The devil said, Abraham Lincoln will die and he'll never be anything. But God said, I got a plan for him. Right. Somebody say amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Uh, no matter what troubles and trials come our way, God is our helper. Psalm 121 and 2 states that my help cometh from the Lord. Right. He is your help. Right. I mean, I've never right. seen a church world that's filled with troubles and trials. I go through them. Your pastor goes through them. Everybody in this congregation, I'm sure, goes through them. If not, I'm drunk. But anyway, everybody has troubles and trials. Yeah. But we've got to remember where our help comes from. Amen. I usually don't like to use poems, but I found this poem, and I'm going to do my best to tell you how it says. When, uh, it goes like this. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trucking seems all uphill, when the funds are rolling, the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must. Don't you quit. Life is odd with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a favor turns about when he might have won. He had stuck it out. Don't give up. The pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. Silver tint, a cloud of doubt. Never can tell how close you are. It may be near, but it seems so far. So stick to the fight with your hardest hit. And when things get, seem worse, that you must not quit. Come on, brother. Amen. When things come at us, we must not quit. Right. Amen. Right. When things come so bad where we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, we must remember this scripture. Uh, Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice not against me, my, oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When it is in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. How many knows he's our light? Amen. When the, you know, when you're in a dark room and the, and the light comes in, it's God. Because he's here to help everybody. Right. On, Amen. Yeah. God is our helper. God is that light to us. If we just look to him. Uh, Acts 26 and 22 states, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue on this day. When we're down and out and don't know what we're going to do, remember this day, God is our help. Right. Amen. 
Don't quit. There are many people in the Bible that was up against obstacles and trials and troubles, but they didn't give up. Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was tossed in there with, uh, without hope. It looked so dark. Daniel probably thought, he probably thought this, this is the end for me. No one's going to know me. No one's going to know Daniel in the lion's den. I might as well just stay here and die. But Daniel prayed to the God of heaven. And God heard him, saw the lions, uh, shut the lions' mouth. And Daniel was still alive. The Bible says, the, there's no God like the God of Daniel. Amen. There's no God like the God of Daniel. That's right. No matter what happens, God can shut your enemy's mouth. Right. Amen. Right. The devil, your friends at work, whatever it may be, he can shut their mouth. Amen. Jonah was in the belly of the fish. To him, he probably was in, it was dark physically. But God had this fish spit Jonah back out. And then the Gospel of Mark chapter 5 records this woman with an issue of blood. for She had it for 12 years. And all that, and all this time, she could have gave up. She she said, "There's no Jesus." But there wasn't Jesus. Amen. She didn't even. Some people say, "Oh, she touched Jesus." Did she? Touched his garment. Touched his garment. That's right. She didn't even actually touch him, but she just touched his clothes, and twelve years is over. You're healed. Right. And that healing is still for today. Amen. Somebody say, "Amen." Quiet on me. Amen. Your healing is still today. It was what, last year? This coming June will be one year that Sister Rose was healed. That's right. Don't have to have an ear nade anymore. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5 records the man at the pool of Bethesda. And he had an infirmity for 38 years. Who could have just, he could have just quit as well. But Jesus came by and touched and healed him. Amen. John chapter 9 records there was a man blind at birth. The disciples asked Jesus, said, Did this man sin or his parents? Jesus answered them and said, he, no sin, This man didn't sin nor his parents, but the works of God should be manifest in him. Then Jesus sped on the ground and made a clay, and Jesus anointed the, the blind man's eyes. Jesus said, go wash in the pool, and the man received sight. You know, that still happens in this hour. We may not hear about it very often, but I still believe in healing. How about you? Amen. I still believe that someone could come down that aisle right now with uh, devils or whatever the case may be, and God can still heal. The preacher can't do nothing. We would get back to that. We'd be doing better off. Amen. The preacher can do nothing but tell you what this book says. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, John, uh, Mark chapter 8 records another blind man. Jesus spit on the blind, this blind, blind man's eyes. The blind man said, I see men as trees walk. Jesus touched his eyes and the blind, blind man's eyes was restored and saw every man. Clear. Right. Clearly. Clearly than this. That's right. <laughs> Clearly than these glasses. He saw him 2020 vision. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament. Now, I didn't know Brother Rose was going to talk about that, but in the Old Testament, Job, he had lost it all. His wife said, just curse God and die. But Job said, I'm going to hold on just a little bit longer. Amen. And if I got the story right, all ten of his children died. I got it right. Okay. Could you imagine? I got two. You got two. A few others got two or three. So, could you imagine? Did they say it the same day? The same day. All ten of your kids died. A father-in-law is bad enough. A mother is bad enough. But could you imagine in the same day, ten kids my goodness. But he said, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to keep on going with what I know is right. And that's what we've got to do. Through trouble and trial, we've got to go on. That's right. 
Right. Joseph, he was, was lied on by Potiphar's wife, thrown in the dungeon to die. But he didn't surrender. He didn't quit. And Joseph was in, went, went from the prison to the palace. That's right. Amen. No matter what happens, church, we can get up. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. We don't have to stay where we are. Right. That's the point here. If we're down and out, we don't have to stay down and out. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He came to help us. He's our help. Amen. The devil ain't your help. I don't care what he says to you. He tells me all, all the time, Jesus don't love you. But then I, I remind him of one thing. I was an atheist for 20 years. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that my God is real. Amen. Amen. No matter what happens, my God is real. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's stand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's all bow our heads. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank the pastor for asking me to come, Lord. Uh, Most of all, I I thank you, Lord, for what you have given unto me, Lord. I ask, Lord, if there's anybody here tonight that's felt like giving up and turning around, I pray, Lord, that you would help them Glory and deal with them that's just to hold on a little bit longer. If one of these days it's all going to be over. Glory. One of these days you are going to return and we're all going to go to heaven. Can Glory. you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. And we Glory. have to hold on. Right, if there's anybody here that needs prayer, I'll pray with you. Glory. If there's anybody that thinks about giving up, I will help you through it. Because there's no need to give up. Right. I know sometimes in life it seems hard, but we must continue on. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, sweet Jesus, Lord, tonight, Father, Lord, your God, you're the same God today. You're worthy. Lord, the same Lord. Lord, those through, Lord, in times, Lord, of need, in times of trouble. And Lord, when life, Lord, just dealt blow after blow, Lord, you brought them through. Lord, your God, Joseph, down in the pit, Lord. Who oh, got sold into slavery, but Lord, he held on. Lord, tonight, Father, we need to hold on in this last day because the Lord is so coming. Lord, your Father, you're here. 